My name is Paul Vardis from Podium Data. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about metadata. So I'm really thrilled to see a packed house when a title includes the word metadata. <laughs> it usually puts people to sleep. But I, I'd really like to talk about the second part of this, which is increasing efficiency and reducing costs uh, and the relationship between metadata and data quality. So I'm just going to give a little bit of a 10 minute kind of overview of some of um, my points of view on this. I've been doing data management. Uh, for large companies, financial institutions for most of my career. And uh, it's been really interesting to see how waves of technical innovation uh, are um, adopted and successful or not so successful in different institutions. And uh, one of the things that we've come to look at is uh, what are the drivers, what are the business drivers behind data and metadata? Um, is this internal or external based? So, we pulled some research from uh, that was conducted last year by Forrester um, around uh, digital financial services. And how many in the audience have a digital transformation program or the like going on in their company? A lot, right? And you're doing that because there are digital competitors out there. One of our customers is Ally Bank. No branches. Very different kind of business model than your traditional banking. Investment management, same thing. Insurance, you're seeing this as well. So there's a lot of initiatives going on that um, are trying to do this transformation. And of course, the top need here is often around customer experience, which is terrific. But the other ones below it, multi-channel integration, um, innovation and in products and services, uh, flexibility, agility, all of these are actually very uh, dependent on data and metadata and knowing about your data assets and using data to manage new processes and products. And what you'll see, what, what we've seen, is that the data drivers are now around data diversity and complexity, right? You've got IoT, you've got online, you've got semi-structured, unstructured data. Um, and the complexity of bringing that together to get a holistic picture or to start doing automation and AI like we heard about this morning. Uh, agility and innovation, that is, the cycle time of bringing a product to market of a year or more is being challenged by these upsides. And even companies that are very, very data rich, like Amazon, are getting into the small commercial loans business. So very competitive, you guys are still heavily regulated. You have to have um, audit trails, and um, uh, you have to be able to manage and understand your data assets. And this is all driving a need for increased speed and scale. And, and so with those data drivers, we've taken an approach, or thought about this as this is now, it, uh, it mandates what we call a catalog-centric or a catalog-first strategy. When I'm talking about catalog, I'm think about Amazon, think about um, a kind of a product catalog that would allow you to know what they you have, where it is. And the reason we talk about it being first, and we'll walk through this, is that we believe that that's absolutely critical for automation and scale. Um, I'm going to talk also that with catalog first, we, we recognize that sometimes perfect in terms of data quality is the enemy of the good. And there is a lot of data management that goes on before you have perfect data, and there's value in imperfect data. I'm not sure why I lost it. There we go. Um, we also believe in cataloging continuously, that this is not a, um, a one-time uh, or, or annual effort. This has to be built into your processes. And something a little more radical is catalog everything. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. While um, we are uh, waiting for one second, I, can anybody raise their hand if they have a seat open next to them? There's some people standing in the back. So if you guys don't mind, come on, on up. There's plenty of open seats over here on your right, a couple over here on the left. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so let me go through this idea of catalog first. And so one of the things that we have found is that um, increasingly there are technologies out there that can scan your universe and analyze your data and create what we call a smart data catalog. And it needs to be able to handle with the data, not that's from a perfect data warehouse source, but the raw data you're getting off of a telemetric system or or, or, or a web form or, or, or third party, and deal with complex formats, dirty data, and we believe that the catalog should, right off the bat, you get a lot of value by doing 
through automated data profiling and identifying things like sensitive data. And that these technologies allow you to build a rich and robust catalog of data, no matter where it lives. And you use the data and the metadata that you derive from that to start building out your data strategy. Because if you're going to catalog a lot of data, you're not going to be engineering and perfecting it all, but you need to know where it is and what it is. So if, for example, you have three or four sources of the same kind of transactional information, you want to pick the best source. But we believe an automated catalog can help you use that as a decision support tool. Which one of these should we use, and which should we make business ready? And we use business ready as a very deliberate term, which is not the same as data quality or master data. Those are extreme poles, if you will, in my view, on quality. Quality is fit for purpose. It does require some cleansing and conforming of data, so you can, for example, use it for marketing analytics, where it doesn't have to be 100% correct for you to get good insight. On the other hand, if you're doing regulatory reporting or client-facing reports, it has to be perfect. So the degree of effort and engineering you put in to identify the data, structure it, and prepare it, it, it differs, and to enable Agility, you want to support multiple kinds of business readiness so that a, a, a data scientist can use it in a sandbox quickly and the sensitive data is always protected. And lastly, provisioning this. The data should be in like an Amazon shopping experience. You should be able to refresh, uh, browse and search it, publish it out to other systems, interact with the data and the metadata and the catalog through APIs, and all the while uh, respect access controls. And so our view of this is that this catalog for strategy does require some new technologies, these kinds of scanners and analyzers, profiling tools, some of the which we have in our product, but I think as a general principle, it's a good uh, best practice. The second is catalog continuously, and that is build metadata maintenance into your automated software processes. So, you know, when we're building the catalog and bringing in the source data, we're also bringing in metadata. We're also looking at and creating validation metadata. What's the quality metrics on that? What's the profile and contents of the data? Um, how, what are the governance policies we should apply? And do this in an iterative and agile approach, but make sure every time you're touching the data, moving the data, processing the data, that you're keeping track of that work and that uh, logic in your um, catalog. Because that's really what's going to have your end-to-end -end history and lineage and those kinds of things that will support you over a life cycle of data management that spans years. And that means multiple technologies, it means cloud, etc. And lastly, we talk about um, cataloging everything. Good night. That's fun. Um, I think it's okay. Um, and that is that. We don't believe, you know, a lot of people have been out hyping up data lakes and, and putting everything on one cluster, but the future platforms that we're seeing are that the data is going to live in the best fit place for it. And it may have a life, a life stage where it should be on a new platform for a few years or for a few months or maybe a day. It may be out in the cloud. You, you, you're going to need to have your catalog be very agnostic as to what's processing the data, how it's being stored, so that you can adapt to future technologies. Now, there's just a couple impacts I want to say in the last couple minutes here. One is, um, when you have a catalog of rich data, and over time, analysts are finding and sharing their results, which is what this uh, pharmaceutical company did, it accelerates their ability to do analytics, not by doing machine learning and AI, but because the comparison of the old way of doing things, where you get some of your data from a data warehouse, some from a vendor, and another from a friend, it wasn't that just that it took a couple weeks to get things together and do your analysis. It's that you couldn't reuse your results again because there was no place for your other analysts to go share it or for you to build on it. And so you ended up, and I think the common definition of data swamp is, it's got a lot of data in it, but it's not very usable. We can't trust it. We don't know who has it. And what their experience was is in 18 months of you catalog for strategy, this analytics process, most analytics went from about three months to complete to two days. The second is this automation in some very important governance fields, right? Where um, if you can start building algorithms and machine learning events, the catalog will allow you to apply that writ large to data over its lifespan. 
So as it's used and emerges, it um, becomes a uh, uh, it, it becomes richer and um, more full. And finally, I'd say that cloud migration is another use case that's very interesting right now. And in that in cloud migration, the catalog allows you to keep track of data from its initial source in your enterprise systems to becoming um, what we call cloud ready and that managed data. We're going to call it. That's right. So get, just getting retooled. But you know, we're really getting back here to uh, there we go. Um, uh, at the end here that there's a lot of use cases here in which the life cycle of the data and the life cycle of the data, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Go here? Um, as data evolves from being on-prem only to cloud and hybrid cloud and next generation technologies. The one thing that's durable here is your catalog. It's really kind of institutional memory about your data assets, the quality, the usage, et cetera. So we've, uh, our approach to this is to think about this in a new paradigm. So as much as I talk about a catalog like an Amazon, we think about data as a data marketplace. That it's not about IT getting the data for the business and a kind of a factory orientation. It's much more of an agile, interactive, exchange of information where the consumers of data become contributors to the catalog, they create new products, and over time it becomes a very rich repository that accelerates the uh, agility of the business um, through repeated use and um, collaboration, you get quality improvements, and you get efficiencies. 